Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for November 23rd, 2015. Item one on the agenda for approval, the cause and event Arlington uh, 2016 5K race for May 22nd. Anybody here wishing to speak on that? Please come forward for your grilling. <laughs> Um, I'm Robin Olinsky. I'm one of the race directors. And I'm Julie Vogich. Okay. Um, so last year we had our first um, cause and event in Arlington. It was a huge success. We sold out the race um, four, weeks. Over, yeah, four weeks in advance of the actual date. Um, so we are excited to bring it back for another year. Um, we raised um, over $10,000 for local charities. Um, and almost half of that money was for Arlington specific charities. We raised close to $1,000, both for Arlington Eats, the Children's Room, and then up to 500 for Leslie Ellis, um, $1,500 for PTOs, because each individual gets to pick the charity where they want half of their race registration to go. Um, and because we sold out last year, we are looking to raise the um, cap of the runners up to 1,000 runners. Um, we felt like the event went really smoothly. We had um, close to probably 50 volunteers who worked with us on the day along with the Arlington Police Department to make sure everything went smoothly. Um, so other than um, raising the cap, we want to keep all of the details of the race, including the route, the same uh, for 2016. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Excellent job, both of you. So, Robin, how many did you have last year? Sorry, how many? We had 680 runners. 680, and this year you're going up to 1,000. Yeah. Good for you. And we are going to work with the police. They had some, they want to make sure that they have the detail, so we'll only go as high as they'll allow us based on the police detail, but um, we're working with them now on that. Thank you, Julie. Excellent. Great. Uh, moved approval and seconded. Further discussion? Anybody here running in this particular race? <coughs> Come on, this year. Anybody? Maybe. Um, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll send you a, a reminder. A yeah. couple of 5Kers right there. Yeah. You know. Can we crawl? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Can I, could I drive it? Like, is there a lead car? You know what? If you would like to, you can. A pace car? We can yeah. push you with your bike, whatever. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for your good work. Uh, under licenses and permits for discussion and adoption, cable, television, ascertainment, a young man very familiar to us in these chambers, our former town council, Mr. John Marr. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pleased to be here tonight. I'll try to make this presentation short. Um, as you know, the town has three cable licenses. The, Comcast license will expire in June of 2016. September, we'll see the expiration of the RCN license and the following March in 2017, the expiration of the Verizon license. Uh, as state and federal law requires prior to uh, any negotiations or extensions uh, or uh, new licenses uh, that you as licensing authority under both federal and state law uh, provide for an ascertainment process. Uh, the ascertainment process commenced about a little over a year ago. Uh, we're in an online survey under the direction of the manager's office, uh, whereby we had about 70, 780 people uh, reply. Before I go any further, the, the ascertainment process has two goals. First, to determine the, the performance level of, uh, for the preceding contract time for each of the cable uh, franchisees. Uh, and the second is if, uh, assuming that they have been uh, performing satisfactorily, what in general are the cable needs of the community for the new negotiation process? What should be included in the contracts? Uh, as I said, we had a, a survey and it was geared to those two considerations. Uh, what was the performance of the various cable companies? And by and large, the, there was a satisfactory uh, level of uh, response uh, that the, the cable companies were performing generally satisfactorily. There were some complaints, uh, of course, as you might expect, but of the uh, of the people that responded, uh, about 72 percent to 80 percent uh, believed that they were performing satisfactorily. <clears throat> the other uh, aspect of the a survey was to determine what are the ongoing needs of, of the town, and that was focused really on PEG access, our public, educational, and governmental uh, 
provider, which is ACMI, Arlington Community Media. And I recognize uh, today, uh, tonight in attendance here is Norm McLeod, who is the executive director. And again, uh, what was the performance of ACMI? And overwhelmingly, the respondents indicated that they had a very high level of satisfaction with ACMI. The next aspect of the ascertainment process took place on April 15th of this year, and it was presided over by Mr. Dunn, also present with Mr. Curo and uh, Mr. Byrne. And we had uh, a, a fairly high level of participation, as I understand it, uh, from uh, other communities. We had about 80 people there. And again, the inquiry is what was the level of performance of the companies and what was our needs going forward. We had 25 people who gave testimony, uh, and it was primarily focused on the performance of ACMI. And again, we saw a very high level of satisfaction. Enthusiasm uh, is not too strong a word to use for, with regard to the performance of ACMI. The last uh, part of the ascertainment process was interviews with stakeholders, which included meeting with ACMI as board of directors, touring the studio, uh, and meeting a, a couple times with them at town hall, interviews with uh, the various department heads involved, primarily the superintendent of schools, who obviously has a vested interest uh, with uh, participation of students in, in cable uh, production. Uh, as we know, there is a satellite office right across the high school now for MACMI, which is uh, utilized. Uh, the police chief, fire chief, uh, fire chief was completely, uh, totally, uh, very much concerned with double poles and what could be addressed in the upcoming license with regard to the removal of plant uh, that is uh, in, on uh, subscribers' homes that are not generally removed in an appropriate fashion and a lot of the plant, uh, the, uh, the equipment, the plant is left on the poles and how, what can we do in the negotiation process to remove those. The Principal, as you know, the cable companies give 5% of their gross revenues to the town. It is up to this board, not me, not the manager, not ACMI, you determine where that money goes. There is no legal requirement that we have PEG access, that we have an outside company. Obviously, I assume that you'll want to continue to do that, given their high, very high level of performance and satisfaction uh, uh, indicated by the general public. But I want to stress, that 5%, which has gone to ACMI in the past, you need to look at that, I think, at, at the appropriate time. Tonight is not the time to do it. Do you want to continue to do that? I'm not suggesting that you don't, but some communities don't give the entire 5%. Say 1% or 1.5% goes to other town needs, which must be cable-related. The <clears throat> presentation, I, should, I go back for a second to the hearing. Uh, there was a presentation made by ACMI, by Mr. McLeod, and also by John Leone, the president of their board of directors. And they're really focused on high definition capabilities, getting a program guide by each of the cable companies to see what is on. When people tune in, they can see what's on, not only on the major cable channels, but what is ACMI going to provide? Uh, what is their programming? They have large capital needs. Uh, much of their equipment is outdated, obsolete. And uh, that is something uh, that we should be looking at in the negotiation process. As far as the negotiation process goes, the schedule is as follows. In the next uh, couple weeks, uh, we will be sending out, <coughs> excuse me, through the manager's office, uh, a uh, RFP to each of the cable companies, primarily focusing on Comcast because their license expires first. And by February 1st, we will anticipate a response from uh, Comcast and then, we'll, then negotiations will ensue. I want to stress that the manager and I and the town council are here to support you. You determine what's going to be in the licenses or at least the negotiation position of the town. I can't, I, I think we need, the manager will, I'm sure will be talking to you individually. There, we do have a proposed strategy. We cannot go into executive session because it would be illegal to do that. We're certainly going to have as transparent a process as possible, but as a matter of course, negotiations have strategy uh, determinations by both sides. And we do have some highlights that we want to have, see included uh, moving forward. Principally, ACMI addressing the, the poll situation, uh, what our uh, other capital expenditures, perhaps for the town, that are cable related would be appropriate to include. So um, 
I think that pretty much uh, does it. I want to thank uh, uh, Marie's office, who has, was always extremely helpful, as she always is, in helping during this ascertainment process. I want to also uh, point out that in the past, uh, in the negotiations, uh, upon occasion, there has been a member of the board who's been on the negotiation team. Um, that is solely within your discretion. Uh, currently, we have excellent outside counsel, Peter Epstein, who we will introduce to the board at some point. But the negotiation team will be headed by anybody you choose to designate, but primarily the town manager. The Cable Advisory Committee and my colleagues here are here to support you, support the manager, support the town council negotiation process. I would like to recognize the members of my, uh, not my committee, the Cable Advisory Committee, uh, <coughs> Dr. Michael Quinn, Joseph Weiss, and David Good, who's our information technology officer. That's my presentation. I'm glad to answer, hear any comments, uh, any questions that you have. And once I hopefully have satisfactorily addressed them or the manager in the town council, I would ask you to take a motion and I'll suggest the wording of that motion. So the first thing I demand in the negotiations <coughs> is that I no longer look older each and every meeting as we go forward here. <laughs> I want makeup. <laughs> uh, my colleagues, comments, statements, yeah, Mr. Curo. Thank you very much. Th uh, thank you for your work, and thank you also to ACMI. It was clear during the hearing that there was really an outpouring of, um, of support. Um, I don't want to go too, too deeply into specific issues, but I think for, for me, especially going through this the first time, it would be helpful um, as we approach the negotiations to have kind of a... Um, synopsis of the, the, the scope of our authority in these types of negotiations. I know it was stressed, for example, during the hearing that we don't really have any authority over rates, per se, but, but, but we do have um, certain types of authorities. So you already raised some issues like, you know, polls or, or asking for, um, you know, high definition um, capability or programming guide and things like that. It, it would be helpful to understand exactly what the parameters are within which well, we, we can operate. They string their poles on our, on our streets. Right. And we're entitled to be, uh, for them to address the concerns. Primarily, you get, derive your authority from the Cable Television, Cable Television Act of 1966. Uh, and I think as far as the scope of your authority, you're right, Joe, that we can't talk about them about rates. We can't really talk to them yeah. about programming. Uh, but there are a lot of things that go into a cable license. And uh, at some point, um, either I, the town council and manager, you know, uh, we'll, we'll certainly provide you with copies of it. You can look at it. And then once you've looked at it, we can come in again and, and talk to you about what your concerns are. But it is limited, but it is substantial. I mean, they give us 5% is a lot of money. For instance, ACMI gets upwards of $900,000 a year from the mm -hmm. town. So we exact the price from the cable companies for them to do business in our town. And uh, there are a number of things that go in there, performance bond, very technical aspects. But I think maybe the next step to, to respond to you, Joe, is to yeah. get a, uh, co copies of each of the existing licenses to you, have you, you review them, uh, and at some point come in and talk to you uh, again. Uh, but I think we need individual uh, discussions with each of you about negotiation strategies because it would be a little premature and not really in our best interest to talk about it at this time. Sure, thank you. And is my understanding correct that, that the, um, the revenue share is based only on the cable portion of the bill, not other telecommunication services? No, it, it's cable revenue only. And of course, we have a concern, you know, as modern technology moves forward that the cable uh, revenue is going to be decreasing as online streaming and so forth uh, increases. Uh, that's something that uh, we have to recognize. Uh, it used to be that the cable uh, licenses, the companies wanted lengthy licenses. Now the, the trend is that they want shorter ones. Uh, so that's an issue that uh, we'll be certainly be discussing uh, and uh, putting together a strategy with regard to that. But uh, the revenue license, revenue for, for cable, you know, we anticipate they'll be going down and we have to recognize that and plan accordingly. All right, thank you. Mr. Dunn? Ms. Mahan? Um, yes? Yes. No okay. Ms. Mahan. Yeah. Um, one sort of long-running um, request that, that the board has had, and I know it's 
been discussed with the town manager and Dave Good and people from ACMI. So I just wanted to put it out there again, since I had the opportunity, in terms of capital plan improvements, is sort of um, getting the selectman's office sort of up to speed in terms of technology, um, similar to what we have on the school side. Um, I was wondering, A, if it's appropriate to put that before you, if the manager had any comment, or should I just keep putting it on the table? And So it's not directly uh, pertinent to the contract negotiations, okay. but my understanding is Dave Good has been working with Norm to plan something out for the room, so I'll, I'll get an update from the board. Okay, great. And then um, I'm not sure if this, when, when you provide um, the three con contracts with the company, if A, there's language in there that we can negotiate around if this is inappropriate. So I'm just going to put a case in point. Um, it's similar to what they're going through down in New York. And it's happened here in Massachusetts a few times. Right now in New York, um, the cable companies are streaming at the bottom of the Yes channel, which is the sports. I'm sure Attorney Heim is familiar with that channel saying, you know, you're about to be dropped, you know, negotiations, you won't receive this channel anymore you know, please call. I'm wondering if, if it's appropriate, if it's in there, that there's some sort of language. And we've gone through it, and usually it's a bargaining chip. Come springtime when the Yankees stop playing, right now it's just highlights of Yankee games. I'm sure they'll settle it before then. But is, is it appropriate to ask, is there language in there, that if something like that happens and it's part of a uh, package, that the cable companies will reimburse um, the consumers versus putting on some obscure and I love cooking shows and fishing shows, but do you know what I'm saying? Is that appropriate or is that not? I'm, I'm not sure I got the question. So the, may I? Yes. The question is when, when the cable companies get into contract disputes with uh, the channels or the actual media oh, providers, oh, right, right, right. if there's a way to get some kind of financial compensation for the, the loss of that Right. People that were saying, you know, I paid for that channel. It's usually sports channels or something part of a package. They upgrade. I, I pay don't for think it. So. Yeah, okay, I don't, we can look. We can. Yeah, if we'll you can. I just people we, had asked me that. We'll certainly inqu uh, inquire. I mean, that, that's the kind of question that's posed to our outside cable uh, counsel. By the way, that's all he does. This individual, his firm. That's all they do is cable negotiation. They do it for about 60 communities. Uh, and he's, he, if he were here, he'd respond directly to that question. I frankly don't have the answer, but I will pose it to him, and okay. we'll get back to you on it. Good. Thank you. Yankee highlights, Doug. What's that, about a minute show, do you think? <laughs> well, it That's covers the Knicks game, too. It covers the Knicks game. Porzingis is great right now. Thanks. I, I would just like to say of my um, 27 years, um, I, I think we've just seen, in terms of government access, just steady, steady improvement. Our last meeting, we had half the meeting in this room and half <coughs> the meeting in the Lions hearing room, and they covered both uh, seamlessly. So. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank you, John, for your input. Norm, would you like to uh, say anything, sir? Please. Our director of ACMI, Norm. Thank you very much. Just like to point out one thing. A lot of folks are concerned, as, uh, quite rightly, that, you know, the, the, uh, every, a lot of programming is going to the streaming side. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, just as John mentioned, the concern in all of the access community television stations right now is where's the funding going to come in the future my understanding of this is and I was at the State House last week there's a community action protection act at the state level that that is being voted on uh, that mimics and mirrors what's happening at the national level there's another community action pr uh, protection act at the I think it's I think it's Miss Baldwin Senator Baldwin who's sponsoring that I think it's, there's an awareness on the part of the country that yes, community access funding may go down. But on the other hand, there's also movement afoot to create additional revenue from the stream itself through advertising. I think the, the answer to this in probably five to 10 years is gonna be a political answer that I don't think any of the communities want their com community access television stations to disappear. So the result is that there will be pressure politically to assist if the cable funding drops, then I believe that what's gonna happen is that the internet uh, streaming funding will start to go up. So I just wanna make that, make you aware of that. Okay. okay. Thank you. So John, the notice that someone is, a, I mean the, <coughs> um, the um, motion that someone's about yes, to make. Uh, yes, yes. If uh, I would respectfully request that the board as the licensing authority and their, uh, Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984 and Chapter 47 of the Cable Services Code, Section 
546A uh, adopt the draft ascertainment report as the official ascertainment report of the licensing authority for the town. So moved. So moved by Mr. Burns, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Further mm -hmm. discussion? Do anybody else here wishing to speak on this matter? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank, Thank you, you, John. Thank you, John. Great job, as always. Uh, next up, licenses and permits for approval are revised notices policy. Mr. Heim. To be brief, I think the board recalls the discussion uh, from the previous meeting. I made adjustments to reflect Mr. Dunn's approach that would require less affirmative act or no affirmative action by the board, uh, board's office. I inserted the uh, missing language uh, into uh, the missing language regarding um, uh, protected speech uh, down past the table of the, the table of notice display parameters, and I, I think that this uh, meets what Mr. Dunn had had sought in terms of the changes. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I know that Mr. Klein is back. If you have any questions for him, or want to elicit any comments from him about the changes that I was, that were made, Mr. Dunn, uh, I'm I very happy with this draft. I think it's really good. I do have one um, minor tweak. Uh, if you pull it up and you look at, and I, I emailed Doug about this uh, beforehand, uh, I think it'll be non-controversial. If you, page two, underneath the table, there's a paragraph that starts, uh, notices consistent. Mm -hmm. And then the next sentence is notices in violation. And if you read that sentence, it can be a little bit ambiguous about who can remove. And so right now it says, notices in violation of any of the foregoing shall be removed by the town and I want to put a period there. And then I want to say, res responsible persons and oh. or organizations may be subject to fines. Yeah. Because right now, because of the and and the and and the and, it yeah. depends, and so. It's a double. Okay. Good by me. You all right, Doug? Understood. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, uh, I move approval. I think it's a, I'm very happy with this draft. Okay. Second. Second. Yes. Yeah, Ms. Mahan. I just want to say, um, Thank you to everybody who's been involved with this and um, has taken our comments and incorporated them. Um, I don't know if maybe you have any comment. I know last year at town meeting, um, this was one of the, those Warren articles that really kind of uh, started to go down a long track versus a short one, and there were a lot of concerns. I think we've addressed them all and addressed them appropriately. Um, I'm assuming the next step will be after we adopt this. It'll be available if anybody wants to view it. Um, on the town website, um, and if for some reason you know I missed something, there's something that we didn't tweak. Um, you know, feel free to let the selectman's office or manager's office. But I, I think we covered um, every point that was raised uh, appropriately because there were about seven or eight of them that really boiled down to about three. Um, so I do appreciate all the work that went into this because. Yes, it's a two-page document, but it's amazing, you know, what was generated at town meeting last year, and I think we got it right with what's before us. So I want to thank everyone who worked on this. Okay. Yep, Mr. Hahn. And just uh, to add to that, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, Mr. Klein uh, developed the uh, the nice uh, Excel spreadsheet that just shows that again, this is a relatively limited universe of things that mm -hmm. the selectmen are saying are okay to notice as, uh, to post as temporary notices. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. Okay. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Citizens Open Forum, anybody on the list? Marie? I didn't see just Is anybody here to speak on the Citizens Open Forum? Save you the trip, Marie. <laughs> oh, yes. asked to be a new member, and they told me to appear tonight, and I'm not sure if I'm in the right place doing the right thing. <laughs> Hi, Sherry, how are you? Good. I know Sherry from bracket school yes. days, that's all. <laughs> but so. we're, we're not approving you tonight, no. Okay. <laughs> it's not on the agenda is all I'm saying. Yeah. So, so could it be we approved this last uh, meeting and you weren't able to be here? I, th I think it's um, December 7th you're supposed to be here. Oh, because they told me to come tonight, so, <laughs> yeah. okay, that's why I was a little confused about why I wasn't on the agenda. Well, I will come uh, back on December you, yeah, When you sorry. come back, you'll get a nice red carpet treatment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, we normally would have resumes and other stuff in front of us. Sorry about that. But, but aren't you having fun at this meeting? Aren't you, aren't you fascinated? <laughs> yeah. 
Anybody yeah. else who said <laughs> it was open forum? Did you hear? She said it's nice to see Diane. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did. I, I didn't uh, know. Say anything about you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that will be the last <laughs> item on the seventh. <laughs> show up early. <laughs> see you, Sherry. Thank see you. you. Bye. Uh, traffic rules and orders. A request for a second space on street overnight parking at 41 Palmer Street. Mr. McKenzie. Good evening. Thank you all for your time. Uh, yes, my name is Scott McKenzie. Uh, here to represent my request, which I think you've seen, uh, for a, uh, an on street overnight parking permit at 41 Palmer. Uh, briefly, the uh, property does not have any parking on the property, nor does it have the ability to implement parking as it's uh, adjacent to surrounding properties and too close to the street. Uh, it's a request for a second permit as one is already issued to a uh, co-resident co owner is Laura Quinn. Um, and uh, so thank you for hearing the request. So there isn't a driveway there? There's a driveway there that is deeded to the upstairs condominium, which is uh, 43 Palmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody? Board members? Um, yeah, Mr. Dunn. I just, uh, so you, I assume you've read the um, recommendation against that we got from the from the police department yes yeah do you have any thoughts having uh, so I, I the way I read understand that you made a request they take a look at it they reply did you have any particular thoughts about the reply or how that went uh, I did review it I didn't see anything in there regarding a, you know, a public safety concern or whatnot um, primarily seemed to be a question around um, you know a precedent issue of do we issue one or two or whatnot I thought that uh, you know each request would stand on its own merit so I'd appreciate the you know consideration of it as as it's written. Yeah, Ms. Mahan. Um, I have read everything that we've been provided. I, I am going to make a motion at this time um, in concert with the police department that this request for the second on-street parking permit um, be denied, um, recognizing the circumstances. But we have this in, commonly in Arlington where I have a two-family myself. It goes condo. Um, I feel it's incumbent upon the developer um, when he or she or the entity develops it, um, takes into account that, you know, if they want to sell it and want to have parking that they provide that and if they don't, then that's part of the purchase price and, the, you know, buyer beware. And I'm just afraid we're going to get into a slippery slope where we have an awful lot of two and three families in Arlington that go condo. This is a request for a second overnight parking permit sort of, you know, once you do it for one, you should do it for others, if, if the case and points are the same. And um, it's, this is really just a real estate, in my opinion, a real estate investment issue um, that we really shouldn't have any role in um, taking into account when we do, on the very rare occasions, um, grant overnight parking permit requests. So I would recommend no action. So is there a second? I'll second that, and I have a, a couple comments too. So, uh, dealing with these issues obviously is, I think they're some of the more difficult ones that, that we discuss here. Um, and I know that probably isn't any solace to you um, with the motion on the table. But they, um, a few years ago, we did have a ballot question on this, on overnight parking, and it was handedly defeated. Um, so, basically, the residents, you know, spoke and said that they do not want overnight parking, and that's kind of where I, we're in this situation now. So I, I, you know, going by the letter and uh, what the police department shared with us, I, um, I, I don't, I agree with Ms. Mahan that it's not the right precedent to go with moving forward. So I'm not gonna be supporting it, sorry. Any other comments? Uh, I, I will be joining also for, for, for many of the same reasons that have already been stated. So uh, Mr. McKenzie, you own the condominium? Laura does. Okay. Um, I'm hesitant to, I mean, I, I'm, you can count, uh, sorry, but I'm, I'm hesitant to agree with my colleagues only from the point of view of, uh, you know, a lot of this report is about uh, others, uh, not Mr. McKenzie uh, directly. Um, have you checked the neighborhood in terms of other options? Have you checked uh, other businesses, other? I'm not aware of any business nearby that's that is uh, has made a practice of, of selling or renting spaces. Um, uh, you guys may know of something that I don't, but I haven't seen one. Yeah. It's a tough one because um, I, for one, have felt we should 
change overnight parking, but as Mr. Byrne points out, the uh, 21 out of 21 precincts disagree with me and want to keep the overnight parking ban. Uh, so anyhow, uh, so all of those on the motion by Mr. Dunn, was that uh, Mrs. Mr. Byrne? Mrs. Mahan. Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Byrne? Correct. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, and I abstain. But on the four to zero one. Sorry, Mr. McKenzie. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Item five for approval: a handicapped parking sign, to, uh, parking space right at 12 Lachlan Avenue. Kevin, we have to table that. She called um, just before the meeting started to say that she could not appear tonight. So Move to table. A second. Seven. It's a second time of tabling for her. Yeah. Okay. So. T uh, Move to table and second it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. For approval, the Capitol Square banners. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi. Jan Whitted from Artbeat for Capitol Square, and with me is Nilu Muchala, who is the designer for the banners that we're proposing. So, has anybody seen the lights? Yes. Aren't they great? Yeah, we're so happy. They look really wonderful. The, um, and so what we'd like to do is identify the Capitol Square Business District by putting up banners uh, on the lampposts once those lampposts are capable of supporting the banners, <laughs> which hopefully will be soon. And this is the basic design. Um, as you're driving or walking, you'd see this, um, this design and it would go through a sequence of colors, um, uh, starting and beginning with the trademark orange on the back. We would have the logo for Capitol Square, and thus identifying the, the district as a place that we've all come to know as Capitol Square. And, and for how long are you recommending these banners? We would like, um, the ability to permanently have something up there uh, identifying Capitol Square. This is the first iteration of a design. I don't know what process you might want. It, uh, these are going to be vinyl banners. They're not expected to have, you know, a, a terrifically long life. We don't know. Um, and there are so many lampposts now um, with the ability for banners. There, uh, there will be some. Um, uh, there will be artists designing banners through the uh, public art committee, et cetera. Um, but we would like to, as a business uh, district, like to always have something that delineates Capitol Square. So always, is that your answer? Always. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, because um, you know others ask us to put up banners, obviously. Right. So. Well, this is a banners meant to identify the area as a place with a name. Yes, Mr. Kira. Uh, I just wanted to ask, just as a point of information from maybe, maybe the manager and Ms. Woodhead, um, in looking at the, the light posts there, I, I believe that they accommodate banners on both sides. Is that not, is that not correct? Or? No, so the, um, the, the manner in which the, the light posts were designed were to have the ability to have uh, <coughs> two poles for a banner and one for hanging plants on the, on the opposite it. side. Ba Got based it. on uh, some design then implementation issues. We're actually going to rotate them 180 degrees so that the banners are facing in, and ultimately I think we're going to remove the hanging plant. Uh, Got it. But they, they're flexible in what you can bracket to them and Got what it. you can actually uh, okay. Got put it. Got on the poles. Um, just uh, mm -hmm. the Capitol Square, I understand you're not going to use all 34, 38. 38. Um, Correct. Lamp posts, <laughs> I think I'm going to call them. I think you're going to use seven? Seven or on 14, each side. Of the seven on each side. 14. So 14. Yes. And I assume with the Capitol Square designation, it will be within the block or two near the Capitol Theater. I'm, what I'm thinking about is um, my question would be how did you arrive at Capitol Square? Um, have most of the other businesses that will be in this area and compass that we're identifying as Capitol Square, it's all there. Um, did this, you know what I mean? I'm just tr trying to think. I don't want to put the banners up and then have somebody say, well, we never heard anything about this. So if you could just address that. Sure. Point. We've been um, 
branding, if you will, uh, the business district as Capital Square for about six or seven years now. Okay. Um, and it's uh, not completely uh, well known by every person in Arlington or in the Boston area as Capital Square, but we feel that it's an important um, uh, way of identifying a destination for a lot of cultural activities that do take place. Um, we have about 25 of the businesses in that several block area that is the main part of the business district, 25 businesses that are members of the association mm -hmm. um, and therefore identify as Capital Square. I, um, I don't know. Um, there are um, some who are not members. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's a good su idea, suggestion, or whatever, um, or if it's too cumbersome, um, but maybe within the um, one or two block, two and a half block area where the signs are going to go up, maybe um, just sort of a paper copy could be offer to the business owner just to say this is coming soon we're going to identify this area you know capital square it's all here um just sort of a leafleting um it, it, it's just an idea you don't you don't have to do that i just want to you know uh, and they are vinyl um banners so you know we can always change and i think with as you say with weather um you're hoping if they last the year that's fine and then my only other um so i just put that to you and to the town manager i think I don't know if I'm getting my point across as succinctly as I think I am in my head. I've had a long day in Providence. Oh. Um, and then my last, sort of, if I had my druthers, um, on the graphics, and I understand this is in the preliminary stages, um, it, it is just because of me, and I'm thinking of, you know, you know, so if anybody wanted to look at something, if I had my druthers on the Capitol Square East Arlington um, panels, the way it appears to me, it looks like um, East and Arlington are two different fonts. Like East looks like it's more bold, more full, oh, it does. and Arlington looks, um, if I had my druthers, it would be uniform, you know, yep. all, all sort of the same font, because I don't want anyone saying, you know, you don't do Arlington Center, you know, that kind of thing. So, but in the, unless it's a design thing, and then again, if I had my druthers, like if you look at the T in East and the T in Arlington, the T in East. No, I see that. Okay. I hadn't oh, I seen didn't know it before, though. That. Honestly, okay. so I'm looking. I'm looking at it in a crazy eye, so I apologize. Uh, see if I'll look at other versions. Yeah, and, and, and if you so yeah, if you it, if you could just, unless yeah. there's a different reason for it, I'd like it to be all the same font. And if there's any way you could squeeze a little more space between East and Arlington. Okay. But but if that affects your design, I'm not asking, you know to throw everything out like that. But um, I think that was also a logo that's been in use for many years. So we were adopting it yeah. to scale it up for these banners. But yeah. we can certainly do some adjustments. I just want to, you know, I, yeah. I'm thinking way far ahead more than I should. But I think all the same font would be great. Thanks. OK, uh, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kuro. Uh So I'd like to move approval for these banners for uh, the the area I'd like to I'd like to describe the term perhaps as something flexible but I'd say use the word like the default and so that if we decide that there is a different event that we want to put them up that we're in, we're not actually I do not want to give the impression that we're giving them forever or, or permanent they are the, the like but I definitely appreciate that they are a good choice to be up there for a long time um, I think that I like the design. Uh, I am going to disagree with Mrs. Mahan, and I'm going to say that uh, I would I would definitely let them. I do not want to be as a board. I'm not comfortable with trying to tell them what it is, uh, what the design should be. I as I looked through my packet when I got it, and I said I have never had a more colorful packet for the selectmen's <laughs> meeting. So uh, I am really happy to support this. I think it's a. Uh, the, ty the type of branding that will help us in uh, inc encouraging businesses in that area. Second. And um, okay. I'd also like to, yeah, just add to that. I, I agree. I think it's really important, particularly now, that, that, the, um, that East Arlington is, is, is now back on the upswing. We just had the ribbon cutting for, for Mass Ave. It's, it's beautiful, and I think this is just kind of the, the um, icing on the cake. I understand why there might be a concern with the, the, the request for 
them being in perpetuity, especially if there are maintenance issues or whatnot. I might suggest <coughs> that maybe we, we make the initial term up to a year and a half. And the reason I say that is because I know that Ms. Witted traditionally comes into us every year around um, May or so to, to ask for permission on Feast of the East. And it might be an appropriate time from the, there on out, you know, each year to review. And then if, if we've noticed that, that they've fallen into disrepair or whatnot, it gives us an opportunity to, to review. I like Mr. Dunn's um, I'm representation also, uh, to, to, to be flexible in case there are other um, events. Last thing I'd also like to say, I just want to thank Ms. Machala for the, the um, participation in, in this. If, if some of you have seen the um, I Am Arlington postcard campaign that's it's on display at the library now and has been around town, uh, the, Ms. Machala actually uh, did all of those interviews and designed those as well. And uh, so uh, thank you again for helping to uh, put us on the map. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, with your permission, uh, change my motion to uh, by default through May of 2017. May of 20, 2017. Um, so I really like the branding aspect of it. I, I think it's really important and I do like the timing of it. Um, I, I'm a little, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent right now. Um, I, I think that the colors are a little too bright. Um, and I think it, the, it comes down to the style thing, and I don't know if that's really what we should, um, if that's really in, in front of us um, right now. But, uh, and I really, you know, I think that they're really eye-catching. I kind of wish, like, when I look at the avenue now, uh, it's redone, I think of it more in, I guess, you know, kind of historical terms. Like, I, I think it's, like, really nice and, I, I don't know if historic's even the right word, but kind of like, you know, like an old town, like, um, you know, um, neat and, um, I guess, yeah, a little more historic. And I, I, I guess I kind of wish that they were a bit more um, toned down, um, like maybe using like maroon and gray or, you know, something more along the lines with Arlington's past. Um, so I- May I speak to that? Yeah, please. <clears throat> I think that uh, Arlington is both a historic town mm -hmm. and an up-and-coming town metro area. Yeah. And I think that that's reflected in the whole public art initiative mm. and the initiative to uh, name a cultural corridor that reflects both the historic importance of Arlington and its present-day activities. So when we think about those 38 uh, lampposts that have the potential to have banners or some kind of visual on them. I think you'll be seeing other requests in the future that um, could be way different from this and perhaps even bolder, who knows. They won't say nibblicious, yeah. um, but um, I think that that's um, also I think reflects the character of the Capitol Square area uh, as a distinct business district versus um, the other two districts. And I don't really mean versus, but there is a tradition in Arlington Center. It's the traditional town center. And I think it's um, uh, really appropriate to have that look if that's what that area seems to be like. But Capitol Square is different. Um, and uh, I don't think this will be the only request that you'll see that will have colors and images, graphics that perhaps don't um, align completely with history and tradition. Mm. No, that's a, that's a good point. I, I've, you know, I really enjoy all of the public art initiatives that are, are going on. I've been happy to support them. Um, in the past, and I, and I know I will continue to, um, but yeah, I, I just my my gut feeling. It, it's my kind of gut instinct after um, first viewing them, um, and I guess I, I could be sold otherwise. It's you know I, it's not a, a massive deal to me, and I, I really because I do like I think the branding kind of outweighs could outweigh it to me, but I I just wish I again that they were. Um, you know, a little more moderate, I guess. But e either way, I, I can see myself supporting this. Okay. 
So, uh, being the colorblind one here on the board, uh, I like them. I like how bright they are. However, I don't think it's mutually exclusive. It seems to me you could put up one that's maroon on one side and gray on the other. I mean, I don't think, but whatever, that's up to you. You're, I'm colorblind, as I say. Could but, uh, you know, as I said at the ribbon cutting on Saturday, for far too long, eight long years now, all the discussion about East Arlington has been over this project, which is finally completed. And it is time for us to move on and talk about vibrant businesses and the neighbors who live there and the visitors who go there. So certainly something that uh, I would want to support. But Mrs. Mahan, something else? Um, just one last co comment. Um, I don't know if you've had or can have any sort of public forum for any public input from East Arlington businesses or otherwise. The second th question I would just pose to the manager, unless you've already done this, um, I know Ms. Rowe um, sort of our quasi-designee on the scenic um, byway committee where we're getting funds from the federal government and Arlington, Lexington, Concord, Sudbury, and there's a fifth community, maybe Carlisle. We're designating um, basically for Arlington. Yeah, the scenic byway. And yeah. I know um, that they have some proposals for um, signage sort of in concert with the designation of that naming. Uh, so what I would, would ask if, if you're okay with it, I, I'll probably, t somebody will probably talk to her later in the week, um, if um, Ms. Roque uh, just could be g given a heads up on this to make sure we're not doing anything that's sort of adjunct to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so the, I, I'm very familiar with the project they're working on. So they, they have some uh, permanent signage they're working on. They're trying okay. to get a design agreed, on, agreed upon by the multiple communities. Um, I would actually think, you know, these 38 and potentially, you know, you know, interchangeable with the 14 that you're proposing, there could come a time where we want to have six months where it's the Battle Road Scenic Byway that's up on the banners. Okay. And then another six months where, or two months where it's Feast of the East and then it goes mm -hmm. back to Capitol Square. And I, I think it could, I think they could all probably all work together, but bringing Clarissa in the loops, a good idea. Yeah, but I just wanted to, and I'm not trying to, I just know that we're making representations to get the federal grant from the government in terms of what we're going to do right down to the maps and what they're going to look like in the, in the demos and all that. So, that. so I just wanted to put that as, a, just to be discussed. Thank you. Oh, we're also making representations to the state right now on um, the cultural district designation and, and Capitol Square is one anchor of that. But I would, if, if, like Mr. Dunn, I, I feel uncomfortable with this board being, you know, kind of a design review board or, or mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, but there is an opportunity, I, I think, the first week of December, I think, probably to share these with so, some of the community. There, there have been some public involvement uh, sessions that have been done on the um, uh, around the public art initiatives for East Arlington, the, the four four places that were. Um, I guess designated by the, this board. I went to one at the Robbins Library. There'll be one at the Fox Library. It may be worthwhile to, to just lay out the, the designs and informally gather some of the feedback, because those will be the folks who, who are really invested in, 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 and care about, uh, about this. Um, and uh, that's what the, the sessions are designed for as well, just get a sense of uh, you know, what people feel we did do that. We brought it up in the public meeting at the at the Fox, um, and uh, you know, the whole there are so many ideas and potentials for, for <coughs> things coming Excuse down the road. Me. We're bringing this now because we're just very excited about having this project Absolutely. done and a new look, and we would love to have banners up for the holidays that say, "Here's Capitol Square." Um, you know, come be here with us for a bit, um, and that's the. And again, that's know. not mutually exclusive to other banners. Uh, in the future, actually addressing the historical aspect of Arlington, some of the postcards that I've created and researched have old vintage images of Arlington. They would look great on some of these banners to bring a bit of that sort of history mm -hmm. back. So it can all be mixed up down the line, but. I think we've pretty covered it thoroughly, although I'm hesitant to support. I, I am hesitant to say a year and a half, to be honest, but yeah. that's your most of Mr. Dunn, right? It is, uh, okay. but if I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely flexible on the duration, and 
If they, yeah, I, I would. I, I, I was making. A, I, I think I was making a motion more to, because I, I like the I like the process. Or I mean, excuse me. I like the end result, and I wanted to approve it. But the the details of how, how it gets approved under, I'm definitely flexible on. Yeah. Sorry. Any other discussion? Um, yeah. To that point, would you be amenable to um, sort of paring down the um, was it May 2017 approval to a shorter duration? Sure. Uh, yeah. Also, with the caveat, what would, you, what would you like? Well, how about we recommend one year, right? We, she doesn't know when they go up, right? We're, we're okay. still working on that issue, so from whatever date they go up, one year from that date. I'm happy. Doesn't mean they can't stay or change or still say Capital Square or whatever. But I do want to be cognizant. We know that people ask us to put up banners all yeah. the time. Yep. So, Absolutely. Uh, so I guess, Mr. Chairman, uh, my uh, it's, uh, hopefully the, to clarify that my motion is definitely not one year continuous. It is one year as default, where we may bump them or other for other things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would there be some process that would be clearly laid out, for example, that a certain number of those banners could always uh, be used or uh, to identify where you are, you know, the name of the place, and some of them would be for art purposes, and some would be for special events. Because it seems to me that some kind of process needs to be available so that uh, we all have a frame of reference. Right, and the process is people come before us, ask to hang banners, and tell us how long they'd like to hang them for and but, for what purpose. Um, That's the process, like you're but there, tonight. So, um, You're asking them to be permanent. I disagree with no, that. No, I, 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 I withdraw that request. I understand. What you're um, what you're getting at, um, but where there are 38 posts and we know where they are, um, I'm I'm just unclear what the process would be for anybody who wants to come and use use you know use the empty ones use take down one that's there and replace it. How does that all get? What you've just done at? tonight. This is come this is the. Us and say we'd like to hang banners on these poles for this length of time. I mean, it's what you've just done. There's no, I mean, that's the process. I appreciate so. that, but I, and, and I'm just asking for 14 of them, and uh, I, I have a map where I know which 14 they are. Um, is there some way of holding that space so that the next party that wants banners says, okay, I know these are now currently in use for this. These are the ones I want to use. I mean, is there an overview is what I'm asking. I would, I would may I, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I would suggest that um, should the board vote favorably uh, for the 14 tonight for the duration that's being discussed, that you could then provide the board's office with the map of the polls that are selected. Okay. And then in the future, whether it be you, you you'd already have your map, but you or another group wanted to use, utilize those that had not been you know, approved during this time period, right. they would know where they're starting from. They could come to okay. the board, they'd have that starting point. Uh, and again, if, you know, if someone came before the board and said, hey, we've got this big event and we want to use all 38, um, you know, the board, I think, would want to reserve the right to say, you know, Jan, for this two-week period, we'd like to take down the Capitol Square banners to advertise XYZ Festival or whatever it might be. Um, and I, I think it would roll out like that, if the board's amenable to that. Yeah. Right. I agree. Okay. On the motion by Mr. Dunn, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay? Yep. Okay. So four to one, Marie. Thank you. So item seven for approval. Mr. Byrne, request letter for heavy commercial vehicle exclusion on Jason Street. Sir. Yes, uh, thank you. So this is a project that I've been working on with TAC for maybe like two or three years now, um, for a while. And um, it's kind of, we came out the gate and we um, had a community meeting. Um, it was very heavily attended um, to talk about some traffic issues up on Jason Street near Monotony Rocks Park. Um, and one thing that we continuously heard from the residents were an issue with, you know, a lot of the delivery trucks that are going to Whole Foods, um, CVS, were using Jason Street as a cut through um, mm. to get back on the Route 2. Um, and while um, the data in the book um, that was collected by uh, TAC, 
doesn't necessarily show um, a very high amount of trucks. I think any are a disturbance. Um, so what this letter does is, re, you know, kind of begin the process with the state <coughs> to me. exclude, um, you know, industrial trucking from using Jason Street. And, you know, we're, we're really at a, um, their whim with this. Um, I don't know the chances of it actually, you know, being put in place, but I, I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty good show of effort on our part um, and showing that we're listening to the residents and um, trying to act on this. I recommend it by talk. Yes. Second. Discussion? Well, let me, I, I won't say, um, it's more or less recommended by the residents and TAC helped draft the letter and um, collect all the information for it. Right. Mr. Dunn? So I read it and I was, uh, I was worried that I didn't know how to differentiate Jason from other streets in the town. So I've gotten requests from uh, other residents at various points of times. Uh, uh, some really informal, some a little bit more formal, you know, like a, a group of, you know, sometimes it's somebody just talking to you. Sometimes, uh, at least on one occasion, it was a group of residents who had organized and approached me. Uh, and um, I, I'm concerned that if we do this, you know, everybody's street is going to want to close off. Uh, you know, I can, the, the people are going to want to close off Park Avenue Extension, they're going to want to close off Appleton Street, they're going to want to close off uh, Park Street. And uh, well, I certainly don't endorse trucking on Jason Street per se, I do, I worry that we, the kids, so can you help me understand why this one should be the one? Um, sure, so I think it's, so this isn't the only, this is like one part of a whole project. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at a, a few different measures um, up on the Jason Street area to calm traffic, um, being, uh, I think, whether it be bump outs or even, you know, per se, say a raised crosswalk or, you know, some sort of yep. endeavor um, like that. And with the actual dimensions of Jason Street, like when you come down to the parkway, the trucks, they really, they, like, they just can't fit. Um, so I think, you know, where you have to take that hard right turn, um, like you're to get on the bypass road. Um, I think that's, that's why I would support it here. It's because the, like, kind of geographically, it doesn't, Jason Street just doesn't fit for them, whereas other ones are more straight away um, and kind of more wide and amenable to them. Okay. Um, does... Is there a, so for the next one that comes, how are we going to decide it? It's a, a good question. Um, you know, I, I think it, it, every, with this and, you know, particularly, you know, I think everyone's, you know, very hypersensitive to their own neighborhood, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, it's just something that we have to evaluate on a case by case basis. Um, I don't think that there can be a, kind of blanket policy um, for this and that we really have to look at um, the different individual, you know, kind of points that, that we see in each neighborhood. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable <coughs> doing it here um, because I think it, in this instance it makes sense um, just based on the road itself, whereas in somewhere else I'd have to, you know, think about it twice. That's all for now. Thank you. Mine. Can I take a crack at it? Um, <clears throat> I would be in favor of doing this with um, the expectation that we've kind of gone down this road s some other times. I mean, I would be thrilled and pleased beyond compare um, if we could get everything in here from Mass DOT. Um, <coughs> but I'm also uh -huh. seasoned enough, like Mr. Byrne and others, um, in terms of you know dealing with Mass DOT in the past. I know we've had similar requests, especially around the uh, heavy trucking on uh, Route 16 that comes off into East Arlington streets. We've had people come in Cleveland Street, um, and when even on Lake Street, um, and when hearings have come up, uh, when that uh, variance is, is being discussed in terms of prohibiting the trucks from coming off from Route 16, we've you, always in the past, when requested, said, we'll certainly present the request to, to the necessary agency. Um, I, I think for Route 16, it's not Mass DOT. 
um, I'm blanking on uh, DCR. DCR, that's right. Um, we've never had any success, <laughs> but we've always, you know, put the request in because residents have said, you know, if you live on Cleveland Street and you see those big, huge trucks coming down, so I'd like to take another crack at it this way. Um, see if there's anything that comes out of it, uh, especially in light of, I mean, I have been on Jason Street a lot because you know if you're with any sports team, that's the route you go with the school buses. Um, and we also do have an uh, elementary school bus route mm -mm. that has several stops along this area of Jason Street. So that kind of makes it, you know, another case in point. So my thing would be, I, I would like to present this um, for myself personally, expecting nothing but being thrilled if we get anything. Uh, and then if any other similar requests come in, kind of do what we've done in the past. Route 16, banning heavy, heavy trucking from East Arlington Streets. We sent something to DCR. We usually don't get our way. Um, I sort of liken this to this. And to your question about in the future, I would say what Mr. Byrne has done, you know, um, whatever the area is, define it. Is it DCR? Is it DOT? Is it some other um, state agency? And just advocate um, for the residents there. Always with the, uh, for me, the presumption, I always say to people, you know, we've tried this before. We don't have much luck. But, you know, we'll give it a shot. So I, I would like to try again. And then if this is the, the nut that cracks it, then maybe we'll get some help in some of those other areas. Mr. Carroll. I, I just had a question. I mean, you said that TAC had helped you to draft the, the letter. Did, did they take a position on this? Um, no, I don't believe so. Um, I'd have to go back and go, go through my notes, but I don't believe that there was an official position taken on it. Um, there will be um, before us at some point in the hopefully near future a whole slew of recommendations for the whole neighborhood that they will be um, you know, voting on. But this is more stemming from a working group that um, I've been a part of. Mr. Chapter Lane. Yeah. Just on that point. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You oh, went, I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I did um, speak with both Jeff Max Tudis and Laura Wiener today on that point of uh, tax approval, just to get some clarity. Uh, and um, what, what Laura informed me was that you know, this had been brought based on the working group's efforts via Mr. Byrne to TAC. And in response to that request, TAC put this together. So though there was no formal vote, it certainly wasn't in the face of any objection from TAC. Uh, but procedurally, there wasn't a, you know, they Official. didn't take the A's and the nays. I, I guess I'm prepared to, um, on that basis, I guess I'm prepared to support the letter. I know that we've always tried to be careful to, to, to get the, the formal TAC recommendations, although as a last meeting proof, we don't always adhere to them, um, but we, we try to. Um, but I, I do this recognizing that in doing this, we, we, we will almost certainly be pushing more truck traffic onto Pleasant Street and Highland, so. But, but which are built for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Particularly, yeah, I think the, yeah. the points that you've raised are, are, are well taken, but um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm also going to support it, to, but I have that same hesitation with just moving them. Hmm. I mean, if school buses can go down that street vertical and horizontal turns, trucks can go down the street as well. So that argument doesn't particularly um, convince me. Uh, and we're moving them to Pleasant Street, and we all remember the neighbors on Pleasant Street being in here complaining about trucks on Pleasant Street, especially the late night and early morning hours uh, of trucking. So, but it's it's the nature of the beast: uh, parking and traffic issues. When we make a, a so rule on one, it affects rules on it affects <coughs> the impact on others. So, but I, I, you know, uh, TAC is very thorough in terms of how they go about things and we certainly have heard from the Jason uh, neighbors about uh, issues such as this so I'm going to support it. Thank you. Further discussion? Is anybody here wanting to speak on this? Okay all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Burns please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay. Uh, item number okay four to one Maureen am I right four to one? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, for approval, CDBG reallocation request, Mr. Chapter Lane. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. So before the board tonight is a request from the planning department that was first forwarded to the, uh, the board CDBG subcommittee. Uh, and after a little bit of feedback from one of the members decided to bring this before the board uh, for uh, review and approval. Uh, basically what this is, uh, within the, the planning section of CDBG funding, last year there was $50,000 approved for zoning reclassification or recodification. That's basically a process where you take zoning, you don't necessarily change it, but you take all of the addendums and amendments and you, you, you redo it into one new looking set of code. Uh, after kicking off the master plan implementation committee process uh, with the recommendations, uh, both the committee and with the recommendations of the planning department found that taking that on um, first thing out of the gate was probably not the right strategic step, but rather uh, taking some steps to begin implementing some of the, frankly, more, uh, more easy to implement uh, pieces of the master plan uh, and its recommendations were more appropriate. So what this request is, is to repurpose a portion of that $50,000, $8,000 towards what's called a right size parking study. Uh, what that parking study would do is look at multifamily housing in more than three units uh, in town, see what the actual utilization is in terms of parking on site and determine whether or not zoning should be adjusted uh, of what the parking requirements would be for multifamily housing. Uh, that was a recommendation uh, of the master plan. And also uh, is to allocate $25,000 from that $50,000 uh, to accompany $25,000 from the capital plan for a design and outreach to the community for a redesign of Arlington Center, uh, both sidewalks and traffic. That's something that Mike Rademacher has been planning to, doing, planning to do and to really do both the internal design work and the external outreach, uh, this additional funding was necessary. That would leave a balance of $17,000 uh, of that initial 50000 uh, if there wasn't another item that we'd want to bring back before the board before this end of this year, that would roll into next year's CDBG uh, funding availability. It could not, again, be used on planning, which would be okay, but it could be used for public facilities and affordable housing, which I think both Mr. Byrne and Mr. Dunn would agree we have no shortage of requests for on an annual basis, so there would definitely be a use, uh, you know, a good use of those funds in the future. Okay. Mr. Dunn? Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Ms. Mahan? This, um, <clears throat> just as a, a point um, to before the town manager, um, there's just one sentence um, under the right size parking study um, that gives me cause for pause. pause. And I, I just want to put it on the table. Um, I'm not saying this isn't the right study, but we're it, in light of the conversation we had earlier here tonight where a developer um, developed a multifamily I think it was a two family. I don't know what, if he turned it into two or three condos. The um, sentence that says, determine if we can reduce the parking requirement in the zoning bylaw for multifamily residential. That, you know, gives me concern in light of the case in point scenario we had here tonight. Um, and mixed use development in commercial corridors. I have no problem with that. And multifamily residential zones. So I, I guess what I would just say is, as that's moving forward, you're certainly cognizant of you know that issue that we discussed here tonight um, you through the planning department I would assume will sort of be the eyes and ears in terms of making sure whoever is conducting that study and is correlating um, all the information that it not just be square footage and um, especially just around the multifamily residential side that they also know this sort of a backstory to that and in whatever way appropriate that that be factored in do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so this, this is for buildings larger than three families. So tonight's okay. matter wouldn't directly be pertinent. But regardless, your point's a good one that we don't, I mean, nothing coming out of this should run this board or any other board into a problem, uh, you know, you know or, or find itself dealing with issues that it doesn't have to deal with. But at the same time, you know, maximizing the value of developable land and making sure that you're not overbuilding parking, I think, is what this is focused on. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I, I know I'm probably going to speak beyond my expertise, but uh, in talking with Pam Hallett from the Housing Corporation of Arlington, there's been some discussions about parking and some of their projects, and you know, they look at, they've looked at a number of their projects, and in each one of them, they have more parking than is actually utilized. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's sort of a good anecdote for why this is important, to make sure that we're not requiring you know, parking beyond what people are actually utilizing you know, today in this area with access to public transportation. And, and I'm just thinking of the phenomenon where my house is a good case in point. 
I have the house lot next to us on the corner has the house lot. My in-laws and the previous owners, the Keshins, there's a house lot in between. We both split it. And um, I know I've been approached by developers and they, they're looking at putting in, you know, you could put in four units, four units in a, a, you know what I mean? So I know you're saying three families and there sort of is this phenomena out there. Um, I know we discussed at a town meeting about, you know, a woman who's been trying to develop her, her um, sell her house and, and develop it. Um, so there are some sites in Arlington mm. where it's perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it. And the developers are coming in and they're, they're being able to put in four family plus units because of the land that's there. That's my concern. And it's a very minute concern. I've raised it with you. You know, obviously you'll know what's going on in the planning department. I just want to make sure, that, you know, we don't open a panacea of, a, of another dimension that we don't yeah. have. No, I think that's, that's, that's well taken. And I know small case in point, it's probably 0.5% of the development in Arlington, I don't know, but I know people, Monotomy Road, you know, people who've been calling me, and I have to explain to them that, yes, a nice family <coughs> lived there, but it was bought by a developer, and it can be developed that way, that's all. Other comments? Okay. On the motion by Mr. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Chairman, uh, six Good. votes on this one. The town manager has a vote. Right, on city BJ. right. Thank you. I was going to let him. I apologize. No, no. no. Uh, on the motion by Mr. Dunn, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 A 6 0 vote. Uh, item number nine, uh, request for proposals, Mr. Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, this is, um, I think, uh, you know, for some time awaited by the board, a draft request for proposals for a temporary lease uh, of the property at 1207 Mass Ave, or uh, otherwise known as the DAV. Uh, uh, Doug did a lot of work on drafting this RFP, trying to focus on what Excuse the board's me. desires were coming out of that uh, public feedback or public hearing on the property some time ago. Uh, so this would give a group who uh, wanted to do some kind of collaborative working space, incubator space, some kind of cooperative effort to utilize the building. Um, you know, uh, what we look for in here is you could do it as short as six months, as much time as a year, see if there is some kind of workable model and then I think it would be up to the board to decide if they then wanted to lease again or sell, uh, but understanding that last year's capital plan did include anticipated proceeds from the sale of this building as part of the Stratton, uh, Stratton School financing. So uh, in, in the document that's uh, provided for the board, uh, you, you'll see there's some uh, points highlighted in yellow. Most of those are dates that we will fill in uh, when, we, when we actually issue it. Uh, a couple of them call out, uh, you know, the 12-month period, uh, the minimum six months, the maximum uh, one-year period. Uh, we put in a, a minimum of six dollars a square foot um, uh, in terms of what we would be asking uh, to lease for. It's a pretty uh, low amount compared to both market rate and even what we charge for almost all of our buildings in town. Uh, so I guess, you know, if there's any changes, we'd be happy to make them, but. Um, if the board is uh, approved, we'll try to turn this around and get it issued uh, ASAP. Mr. Dunn. My only question is if the time frame still makes sense. Does it still make sense in relation to Stratton and stuff? So we would be, if, if we were able to, um, you know, execute something by February or March, they did it for a year, um, and then we were able to, uh, you know, be ready at the end of that year to try to move towards a sale, uh, I, I think we can make it work. Yes, Mr. Well, my, my only question is in reading the RFP, it looks like uh, just <clears throat> if you can clarify, it is only allowing short-term leases for <coughs> incubator purposes? Yep. Or I, does it leave I, open the possibility that if there are no bids received for an incubator that another communal purpose could be used? So the, the, the answer to that is, is multi-layered. First, you have to keep in mind that this is a real, a real property disposition, even though it's a lease, for what, we're, uh, it, what constitutes a public purpose. So part of the reason it's been priced the way it has is the condition of the building, and that yeah. it's basically being taken as is, as a building that, as you've all seen, is not in terrific shape. But the other purpose that derived out of this process where we got a lot of public uh, input was uh, economic promotion and development in Arlington. And that, that was the message that I, I believe we received loud and clear from the folks who were saying, let's not just sell this right away. Let's give this an opportunity to see if we can turn this into something that's a big benefit for Arlington's business development. So if it was going to, if we don't get responsive uh, incubator 
proposals. We would essentially have to put it out for bid for another purpose and we might have to reprice it. Where if we were just basically putting it out to bid for general commercial purposes, we wouldn't be able to discount it under it. Uh, Chapter 30B. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Motion? Somebody? Move approval. Second. And second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Item 10, call for a special town meeting. Mr. Chapter Lane. Uh, so I guess the only thing I would add here is I know I, we've, we've been in communication over the course of the past few months uh, about the potential for a special town meeting uh, in January uh, with the, the really the, the only driving reason that we would call this special town meeting is to put funding in place for the Stratton School Project uh, in the appropriate time frame. Uh, two reasons being, uh, a, we need to get modular classrooms in, in place by the close of school in June. Uh, there had been a prior plan, as the board is most likely aware, to have uh, a distributed model of modulars at various schools. Uh, since then, the school committee and the PTBC <coughs> have moved towards a model of having uh, basically what you call a modular farm at Stratton. So Stratton will be at Stratton just in modulars uh, for the course of this project. So we want to get those on site so that things can be transitioned out of the building at the end of the school year. Secondly, once the architect came on board and actually started digging into the construction schedule with the goal of doing the entire renovation over the course of next school year and then getting uh, kids back in for the following school year, being able to award the contract um, and to, to begin at the end of school, so to begin in June was also very important. And we, we looked at this upside down, inside out, and getting that contract awarded in the confines of annual town meeting was just not going to happen. Uh, so those are the two reasons why we're um, calling or asking the board to call this special town meeting. Um, with it called, it will provide us opportunity to consider some other business, uh, funding the AFSME contract, which was the only remaining contract that had not been ratified uh, at the annual town meeting uh, earlier this year, as well as uh, Wayland's request to be released from the Minuteman school district will will need to be. There'll be some other items that we'll, we can talk about whether or not we want to include them. Um, uh, something in regards to Minuteman uh, for a regional agreement change from, from our end, um, as well as uh, I, I know um, uh, Ms. Stamps may uh, a entertain wanting to put something on in regards to the tree bylaw. I'm not sure what the timing of that is, but I know I've heard talk about that. Um, I think that's the universe of what I'm aware of now, uh, but obviously if there's something else that the board would like to consider, we can do that as well. Move approval for a special town meeting January 25th, 2016. I'm assuming that's a Monday? It is. Okay. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, please state and vote by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And for approval, Marie, opening the warrant, what, what are we recommending? Uh, we're going to open the warrant. Let's see, open it December 2nd. December 2nd. Yes. From and to close. December 2nd also, 8 in the morning to Wednesday. 4 in the afternoon. Okay, the same day. All right. Motion. Move approval. Second. Move approval to open and close on December 2nd, 8 to 8. Second discussion. And I'd just like to say, <clears throat> however we can get the word out that um, the special town meeting is a special town meeting. We will be having the annual in April. Um, yeah. You know, we don't want to turn this into a mini. I mean, for me, what was driving for me was <clears throat> we need to do something on Stratton. Um, ex except the AFSCME contract that came outside, and if we had to do something with the man, you know, whatever the town manager, I just would like to whatever way I can, and I can't, can't <coughs> preclude anybody from doing anything, um, but that, you know, ideally for us is if, if we can get in, this truly is a special town meeting for right. a handful of items um, that need to be dealt with right away because there are time um, restrictions, um, and that's why we have to do this, and if you have something that, you know, and, and probably would receive more of a um, airing of the issue at the annual town meeting um, in um, April. Right. So I, I, I can't tell anyone not to put anything else in there, but right. I just wanted to put that out there. But also, am I right, we need 100 signatures for a Warren article on a special versus right. 10 for the regular town meeting. So we would ask people only if it's very time sensitive mm -hmm. should they try for the special town meeting. But. It's a democracy, you know what? They can do what they want. <coughs> Excuse okay, me. Okay, other discussions? Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things that I'd like us to put on as a placeholder is a regional agreement vote for Minuteman. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so optimistic. Yep, okay, all right. Because that would be time sensitive, certainly. 
Yes. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Mahan or, or Mr. Byrne? Uh, Mr. Byrne. Uh, you two arm wrestle and we'll see. <laughs> uh, all those in favor, like Mr. Mahan, I think, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Correspondence received. Move receipt. Second. Second. Who wants to speak to the three? Anybody here to speak on any of the correspondence received? Yep. Please come forward. Um, good evening. My name is Barbara Wexler, and I had submitted a request with regards to a crosswalk near Palmer Street. Uh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts, a couple of other little stores there, and I, I live nearby, and I witnessed people crossing um, Mass Ave, um, and I just fear that uh, there could be a pedestrian um, killed. I know there's this crosswalks further, you know, a couple of blocks one way and a another block um, further down, but it really is, it's a wide street. I know they originally thought about putting the, you know, a um, cement in the center there. Um, so I just think this is an opportunity, um, particularly in the morning, I see people crossing all over there and just ask you to consider that. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Ms. Mahan. Um, I guess I would, ask for some guidance from the town manager on the three pieces of correspondence received, um, recognizing that attack has uh, a lot of stuff on their plate. So if, if anyone thinks something should go to TAC, please let me know. But I was envisioning, first on the request, traffic calming along Gray Street, where the resident is asking um, to uh, not engage in the program that we're about to engage in there until some of the, those concerns. Would that be something your office or planning department would um, be under your purview? Yeah, uh, so in, may I, Mr. Chairman? In regards to the Gray Street request, um, uh, there's reference to uh, a desire for the town to adopt a complete streets program. It already did last year at town meeting, uh, so that's already been done. Uh, we certainly are paying attention to the state rolling out that funding, and I, I think that it would be, it, it would not be going against any existing plans we have to wait until mm -hmm. that funding's available. Uh, to be able to look at mm -hmm. Gray Street holistically before any improvements are made, so I think I think that can stay. But somebody from your office or planning can engineering DPW, respond yeah, to it. Uh, purview. Okay, uh, and absolutely. then would I be correct on um, the request the previous speaker cited um, on the crosswalk for Palmer Street near Palmer Street and the no right on red sign at intersection of Forest that that go to the police department to the traffic division unit to assess. So the the no right on red absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, my my concern uh, with the crosswalk, uh, w with all due respect, is that that is in that it, it's in the confines of the brand new finished and designed Mass Ave project. Mm -hmm. And I know there was a lot of discussions about crosswalk locations. So I I, I'm, I, I strain to think that contemplating a new crosswalk at this time uh, is appropriate. But I but I defer to the board's all judgment. Right. How about that. if my motion is that. I'd like to refer um, traffic calming along Gray Street and the request for crosswalk near Palmer Street to the town manager and, and or his department heads um, to, to provide an appropriate response yeah. and look into and evaluate um, yeah. any recommendations, if at all, and that the request no right on red sign also through the manager be referred to the, the police department tra traffic enforcement unit. Is that okay? Seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 New business, Marie. Nothing. Mr. Heim. As the board knows, we did receive some additional correspondence from SEB LLC with respect to the 40B application uh, regarding the Mugar property. We just mm -hmm. received it last week. Uh, what I want the board to understand is that uh, Mass Housing worked with the developers to complete their application, regardless of how we might all feel about that. Um, we should consider their application complete and that uh, we should essentially be waiting for Mass Housing's decision based on uh, their application materials and this board's two very thorough uh, responses in public hearing uh, on all of those related matters. Okay. We don't have a time frame though. 
Okay, that in on new business? That's it. Yeah, Mr. Chapter Lane. Okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, I know it's been mentioned by, I think, several board members, but uh, very nice ribbon cutting this past Saturday. Uh, thank you to the, to the board members that attended. I thought it was a nice turnout, probably 40, 50 people on a, on a little bit of a chilly, but still nice November, uh, November morning. Um, you know, I, I would have... Um, I would have said this uh, at the uh, end of the last meeting, but I know we were, we were sort of late in the night and short on time, and the board's already aware of this, but uh, we have hired, and the town has hired a new deputy town manager, uh, Sandy Pooler. Uh, he'll be starting on January 25th, uh, after he wraps up uh, his budgetary duties in the town of Amherst. He's currently the finance director in Amherst. Uh, but the, the only new piece of information is uh, he is going to plan to come before the board, uh, to meet the board at its meeting of December 21st. Uh, so we'll have an opportunity to, to meet you uh, and, and vice versa on December 21st, which I think will be a, a nice opportunity. So his first day is also the first day of our special town meeting? <clears throat> his first day. I told him. I said, we, we're, we're bringing you in. We're bringing in the big guns <laughs> for the special town meeting. You better be ready. I didn't uh, know if, you, if that was coincidence. But anyways, yes, thank you. I started on a Thursday before the town meeting on a Monday. So mm -hmm. I, I got two days warm up for deputy town manager. Uh, and that, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Byrne. Um, Nothing other than I really enjoyed uh, the ribbon cutting on Saturday as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Just very briefly, um, when the town manager thinks it's appropriate, um, perhaps in the spring, pre-spring, um, that I've been asked, especially by Paolo Marinelli, about the thermoplastic crosswalks. I know we had a plan and we were going to implement them. Perhaps maybe in the early spring, you could provide the board with um, nothing cumbersome, just to sort of, you know, Here's what we planned, here's what we did, here's what we're planning to do yeah. in the future. Um, and then um, I just want to, A, remind everybody that we all know Thanksgiving Day game, Arlington High, Arlington Catholic High School. Um, I have a very nice marriage um, between the two teams, football and cheerleaders, because of my, my um, good fortune of coaching. But it's going to be a great day. Come on down. I, I do want to thank in advance uh, the town manager. We've had several conversations um, because last year we had just a ridiculous amount of snow and base and, and AC was home and when I was talking um, with Dan Shine um, he, we both said and I've also been talking to him that you know what literally we were grabbing dads and some moms out of the stands and um, along with DPW just shoveling it out so I know I've wasted thankfully um, three good conversations um, with the manager and a couple with Dan Shine to say, you know, do we have a backup plan? Um, what can we do with new turf out there? Looks like we're not going to need it. So please come down. It's, it's going to be great weather. Um, that's why my Thanksgiving will be late because I wouldn't miss it for anything. And especially where, you know, you've got a new turf field down there. The track will be done in the spring. Um, and it's amazing how that site has transformed. Um, through the school committee and school department, but also you know members of this board of selectmen, current and past, um, that we really have a pretty decent complex down there. Um, a lot of people have said to me, when can you replicate what you've done outside, inside? And I said, we're working on it. So you're all welcome to come down 10 o'clock. Come down sooner, actually, because they have some pre-9 o'clock ceremonies for the seniors and, and others. So hope to see you Thanksgiving Day. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, Sorry, I'm ordering the thoughts. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, about the Mass App project, uh, we were all talking about the ribbon cutting, but I mean, how much I enjoyed that ribbon cutting. And in particular, I just wanted to mention that, uh, that about how happy I am about the, we, talk, we talked a lot about the community involvement, but also the volunteer, I want to just call it the volunteer involvement a lot. Just the, the all the work that TAC did on that, and in particular, uh, Steve Smith, I think that he, uh, so there are so many people that we should thank and do thank, and I just wanted to mention those as being near and dear to this board's heart in terms of uh, the expertise and energy that they bring in. Uh, my second item is Minuteman, um, which is currently my second job. <laughs> and I have done, I think, two more Lincoln meetings. I've got a Sudbury meeting coming up. Um, I did a Belmont call. Uh, I have, through the, the manager, We've asked Doug to put pen to paper on a draft of what we have been referring to as the Boxborough Protocol. Uh, I'm currently driving towards our next full, when I say selectmen's meeting, 16 towns of selectmen's meeting on December 2nd. And I had been hoping that we we're going to have something that all 16 towns can like actually say yes on. And I'm not currently feeling like we're going to get there, partly because uh, just Lincoln's 
there's just no way I can get them there fast enough, I don't think. But at the same time, I do feel like there's some positive progress being made. Uh, happy to talk to anyone about Minuteman at length if you want to hear more. Uh, or here if people wish to get more. Um, my last item is that this morning we had a meeting of the long-term planning committee <coughs> meeting where we reviewed um, a series of override and debt exclusion options talking about for 2018 um, for an operating override or 2021 for an operating override. We looked at some very like back of the envelope numbers for a new high school for Arlington. Should we get accepted to the MSBA in three weeks or not? Uh, preliminary numbers for Minuteman, should we get be accepted? And we also talked some contingencies about what we would do to pay for um, the enrollment increases that are happening capital-wise, uh, like the, the task force that we appointed Joe and Steve to. Uh, whatever they decide is likely to cost money, how we're going to pay that. And we also talked about, sorry? In Diane. Excuse me, yeah. Joe and Diane, I apologize. Um, and um, we also talked about some numbers for the forthcoming budget because we need to give the, gui the guidance to the town manager because he starts his budget cycle next month. So I don't usually talk that much at new business, but hmm. there you go. But it was done well. Uh, I'd call it all work in progress, but I think, yeah, I think there, it was a, I would say this morning was a very productive meeting, yeah. actually. I meant your comments were done well. But well, thank, thank you, you Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. I'll try to match them. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you will. No root business. <laughs> <laughs> Those were better. better. Yeah. Uh, so I would also like to thank uh, my colleagues and so many people for the work done on that East Arlington project and the ribbon cutting. And also, since our last meeting, we've had our, pay, our um, Veterans Day uh, uh, service. And I think it was spectacular. I believe that I'm aware of, it's my first time in 27 years that all five members of the Correct. Board of Selectmen were able to be there. Um, and, you know, Jeff Chung Lo, our veterans officer, just did an outstanding job. Um, I felt Adam holding Pearl was a particularly touching moment uh, for us, especially as she went to grab the microphone. There's a star in That's the That's the best when they go for that, that, that age. Yeah. They just yeah. want it. Uh, but like the, the other thing I'd like to say to my colleagues is please, um, you know, uh, John Marr mentioned tonight that uh, we have in the past had a member of the Board of Selectmen as part of that uh, negotiating team for the uh, uh, cable contracts. So if any of you are interested, please let me know. Uh, our, the next meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be December 7th, a motion to adjourn. Uh, just with one caveat, is there also under the 1207 Mass Ave, the evaluation process is done by the town manager and a representative from the board? Yeah, and we so will we'll have time at a future meeting. Oh, too. okay, so, all right, so move to adjourn. Okay. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Good night, Arlington.